head with oil, my, my cup, cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall yeah. follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We're educated, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I haven't said that in 17 years. And I still remember that. Indoctrination is not a good thing. Yes, 17, bro. Indoctrination is, it has its good moments. <laughs> All right. So I have a story for all you out there about my uh, exciting weekend that had start last. No, that, last Friday. It, kind of, it started on Friday. It started on Friday. Shane, if you get my crate, bro, I'm gonna shoot you in your chest. So I took your crate. I had this roommate, BJ. He lived with me for the last year and a half. He said he had. I want everybody to know. It had passed this no longer. Um, <laughs> So, uh, bro, I got one crate, bro. That's no good. Two Mondays ago, I brought him to work because he ran out of gas, had to take the man to work. Cool. And I got a call on Friday saying that Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, he just didn't show up to work. No real reason why he said, but he didn't. Now, Friday, he's supposed to pay me my rent for his part of stuff. It's like $260. Now, this man's going to question me on the bills, I guess thinking that I'm trying to cheat him or something. So I go through the bills with him, and it comes out that he actually owes $300. So his dumb ass just had to pay an extra $4. Now, uh, that Friday, he didn't give me all my money. He said he had it, he was going to give it to me, never happened. Saturday morning, woke up, asked him again, didn't give it to me. I'm like, okay, whatever, I got other shit to do. So I leave after counting the rent money that I already had. And I come back in an hour and he gives me his rent money finally. No hassles, no nothing. And when I went to go count the money, I was $100 short of the rent money that I started with. So I'm like, did this man really just steal $100 from me and then give it back to me? Is that not the coolest shit? You have ever fucking heard. Bro, I'm just trying to call it. Yeah, I'm gonna steal <laughs> your money to pay you with your money because I owe you money, bro. Fuck out of here, nigga. So after that, we had a conversation with him. Uh, He's uh, laughing throughout uh, the whole time. Stop. And I'm like, uh, this is uh, uh, oh, a serious thing. It's $100 that's just you know. missing. And oh. you over here laughing and joking when I'm trying to be serious. Makes me look even more guilty. So I'm like, like, whatever, I got other stuff to do. So I go out, party, drinking, have fun, blah, 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 blah. And I come back around 2.33 in the morning, and then I get a call from him. Asking me to pick him up behind Hunt's Elementary School in Fort Valley. <laughs> and I am in Columbus. You want me to drive an hour away to come pick you. Bro, this story is so epic, our game oh, had to stop. <laughs> to come pick you up after, I'm pretty sure you stole $100 from me at 3 in the morning when I've been drinking. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't go. I uh, told him he was just going to have to try to find a way to make it until tomorrow after I wake up and sober up and good. But uh, I ended up picking him up at 6 o'clock on Sunday. So that's what, like 18 hours or something like that. On his own, mm. on the streets. <laughs> and I picked him up from Butler, Georgia. Because apparently he walked and then some people picked him up and was yelling at him and stuff, saying, Should we go to jail? He can crazy people. I don't know. But they dropped him off from Butler, Georgia. I pick him up. On the way back, I talked to him. He said he think he might be smoking weed too much because he uh, said he got in an accident behind the elementary school because he was smoking and he lost track of time and then he just ended up there. That makes sense to me, but no, that's what he said. And then uh, he's talking about how he uh, probably smoking too much, need to change his life. Also, I'm like, cool. I'm glad this accident opened up your eyes, whatever. And uh, he got back to the house. <laughs> he got back to the house, and he saw that his mic was missing. Now his mic was taken by our other roommate, Shell. Because uh, she felt like it was her money getting messed with too since it was the rent money that he stole. And she's going to hide his mic until he pretty much confessed to that he stole it. 
Now, when he found out that his mic was gone, Shed wasn't there. So he's over here asking me. My friend Tony was there at the time. My wife and her little sister that's 18. And then I ended up leaving because I had to take care of some transactions elsewhere. And uh, when I came to the door, he was there. It was in my face, yelling about his mic. Now, he's a... Uh, uh, I don't even want to say a rapper because he doesn't. Rapper, he's a, a rapper. A rapper. Who yeah, the fuck is he's, 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 he's trying to become a rapper. That's what he's doing. He's trying to become a rapper. That's My bad. what he would like to do. I'm a rapper too. And he man. bought a nine hundred dollar mic. I don't know how he afford this nine hundred dollar mic, but that's what he bought, and that's what she took and she was hiding. So he continues to be yelling and uh, angry about it. He showed me that it's gone. And then when I turn back, he's in my face, like two, three inches away from my face. And I see out the corner of my eye, a knife. I'm just like, I know this nigga did not just pull out a knife on me. Like, he knows that I'm crazy. He knows that I would kill him. And you gonna pull out a knife on me? Really? So I end up grabbing his wrist, wrestling for a little bit. And uh, right when I'm about to pick him up and throw him, because he can't fight to save his life. But uh, he ends up panicking. So, whoa, 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 bro, sorry. I wasn't trying to stab you or anything. I'm just upset about my mic. I'm just like, okay, I get that. But don't ever, ever pull a knife out on me again. Because I will use it if you don't. Promise I will. So, now all that stuff happens. Now, his uh, sister and her husband ended up having to uh, come down here because he can't stay in my house no more. He just pulled out a knife on me. I'm not going to let that happen. So they're supposed to come down, pick him up, take him back to their house. He stayed with them for a while. And then I might let him come back and we'll talk about what happened and all that stuff like that. So they get down here around like 12 o'clock, 11.30, something like that. And uh, she takes her brother outside, BJ, and talk to him for like an hour. We're inside talking about what happened and just whatever. And then he finally agrees that he'll go back up with his sister. Now when we're getting ready to collect some of his stuff and put it inside the car, I was in the house with uh, Bear Boy, his sister, and we was getting some of his stuff and the husband and BJ were outside. And by the time we came to the door, we see the husband on top of BJ rustling him down because apparently he hit him in the jaw for no reason. Then he picks him up and he slams him on the ground, slams his head into the concrete, knocking him out cold. Then he tells me what happened. I'm just like trying to figure out what's going on. Then that man, uh, BJ's just going to get up out of nowhere. He was only knocked out for probably like 20, 30 seconds. And then he's going to act like nothing just happened. Like he didn't just punch the husband in the jaw two times. And he didn't just... Get knocked out. He's like, nigga, what, what, what are you doing? Like, it just like. So he picks up his stuff that he dropped when he was tussling with uh, the husband, and uh, he ends up walking away a little bit to the curb, and he sits down, crosses his legs, and got on his laptop, which is way too far away from the house to use the Wi-Fi. And we just standing there next to the car, it's like, what is this nigga doing? He is going crazy. He is really losing it right now. So uh, we end up actually kind of planning to kidnap the nigga because we was going to knock him out. We was going to tie him up, put him in the back of the car, and then going to take him home. Because he just had to go. It was just, we was tired. It was 1 o'clock in the morning. We ain't got time for this. We need to get it done so we can go on with our lives. So I go inside to get some rope. <laughs> And find something to tie him up with. You ain't heard the best part. And by the time I come back to the door, I see his uh, sister Bearboard holding his jacket, which has a shirt in it too, and his jeans. And I look up and I see BJ running down the street in his boxers and socks. He ran down the street and took a hard left and was gone in his boxers and socks. I was just like, what the fuck happened? I, I, Catfish is the name of the husband. I was like, Catfish. 
I need you to tell me what happened because I was not going for that long. How the fuck did you end up fighting this nigga and then him running away no shoes? Just socks and boxers. So he told me he just went over to talk to him again because he was sitting over there by himself on his laptop, crisscross applesauce. And uh <laughs> They got into a little tussle in a fight, then the catfish hit him in the nose, and he started bleeding. He think he might have broke his nose because there was blood everywhere, all over his clothes, all over the husband's clothes. And then while uh, he, uh, the husband wears glasses, so his glasses fell off in the little fight. So we're in the the dark, using our uh, cameras and uh, lights to try to find his glasses. And then we're probably sitting there for at least like two, three minutes trying to search the grounds and shit. And then BJ comes back. And sits down in the dirt. Just two more steps to the left, he would have been in some grass. But he decides to sit in the dirt. <laughs> so we over here still trying to find a glass. Like we don't know what's wrong with this nigga, cause the nigga came back after just getting the ass. Well, I guess he was cold, cause it was kind of cold out that night, and he was in boxes and socks. So I guess he was gonna come back for his stuff. But then Catfish got up. He was actually going to apologize to him, saying he didn't mean to hit him that hard in the face and make him bleeding like that. And then before Catfish can even get halfway over to him, he got up, ran away, tripped over some trees, and kind of did one of those little crackhead little swerve kind of runs, and then took <laughs> off <laughs> in his boxes and socks again. So they were frustrated. They got in the car, and they went back home. Uh, I pretty much kept most of his shit outside, his clothes, his electronics, all the other stuff, speakers, headphones, yeah, the camera phone in there, and left all outside. Woke up in the morning, stuff was still there. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to leave the clothes out and take the electronics back inside because I don't want nobody else trying to steal it. Another day goes by, clothes still there, untouched. I'm like, so this nigga is still running around in his boxers and socks. Like, I don't know how this nigga has not been arrested yet because I was checking the list to see. Like, I like, I know he's going to get arrested. He has to because he's not coming back for his clothes and he's done his boxers and socks. So I'm waiting for his name to pop up in the system, and it still hasn't popped up yet. I'm just like, this nigga is doing good. Like, he just made it like a day and a half with no clothes on. Like, <laughs> I was just like, I don't know. And then the it was cold them nights, too. Because I'm like, but I was like, whatever. But uh, I still didn't know where he was. Didn't see him in the system. I'm on my way to work, and my mom and my dad text me. Talking about, do I know somebody that has a lion tattoo on their shoulder? Now, BJ, my roommate, has that on his shoulder. <laughs> now, the reason they called my parents, because we're not related in the slightest. He's from a totally different family. I don't know why he really chose to do this, but they called my parents because he claimed to be me when he got arrested. <laughs> He said that he was Quentin Alexander when he got arrested. And I was just like, this nigga is still going crazy. Three days later, he is still fucking crazy. He tried to take this man. I don't know how he just snapped out of nowhere. I knew this man for a year and a half, has never done anything crazy. Ever like he's just a quiet reserved cool dude and then he just <laughs> snapped and went oh, fucking crazy. Ray is trying to take this nigga's name. Dude. So then I had to go down there and prove that no Nick, that's not him. I'm Quentin. That's <sighs> then come to find out they already figured it out because uh I called his sister and told him that that first day I had to oh. go to work and then go the next day and they already already cleared up by the time I got there. So I ended up finding out that this man was uh charged with uh public indecency, uh I think it was eluding or assaulting the officer, false uh false documents. Yeah, documents and information. And it was a, a four <laughs> charge that I really don't remember. But uh, his bond was $3,000, and his uh, closest court date was uh, six months to a year. So I was just like, okay, well, I'm pretty sure no one's going to bail him out, so I don't really have to worry about him trying to come back and get the rest of his shit no time soon. 
So, uh, yeah, that was my Friday till about Wednesday. Fun times, exciting life. <laughs> oh, just so yeah. bad. He tried to take your name. My name. He tried to take my name. Most people try to take a celebrity name. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am Quentin. Fucking Alexander. Fuck you, my fucking jerk. For bet those that nigga was ashy. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by fucking Jergens. By Jergens, when you're home alone, but you keep hearing footsteps. I'm mad. <laughs> Extra shit. Knock the fuck out for twenty to thirty seconds. <laughs> yeah, like, got back head. The fuck? like you see his hand twitching that as we talking. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I see the niggas twitching like he, he was he was dead. He was a rag doll for a good four to five seconds, and then a little twitch in his hand. I was like, "Oh, that nigga's fighting." Then he's going to come back. He's like, "I do not give up. You did not knock me out."